Hi there, welcome to Exam AZ-900 Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 31 entitled Azure DDoS Protection. My name is Tim Warner. Our AZ-900 Azure Fundamentals objective today starts with the functional group Describe General Security and Network Security Features, passes into Describe Azure Network Security, and terminates with the skill Describe the Functionality and Usage of DDoS Protection. And as always, if you want a copy of the entire outline for this study guide, as well as links to the videos, go to timw.info forward slash az900sg. First of all, I want to make sure that you know what Distributed Denial of Service, or DDoS, means. According to Cloudflare, which is an industry-leading provider of DDoS protection, you might have visited a popular website and received a Cloudflare page that said, please hold on a second, we're making sure that this connection is legitimate, or something along those lines. They make their business, Cloudflare does, doing a bunch of stuff, but protecting customers against this kind of attack is one of them. They say that a distributed denial of service attack is a malicious attempt to disrupt normal traffic by overwhelming the target with a traffic flood. A denial of service occurs when a server is no longer able to offer what it's supposed to to customers. From time to time you hear about Reddit's down or CNN.com is down. That may or may not be the result of malicious DDoS action, but it does happen all too regularly. Bad actors want to create a denial of service in order to, in many cases, embarrass a company, or if they can take their e-commerce website down for a period of time, you're causing a tangible financial loss for that company as well. So DDoS is almost universally, I'm just going to go ahead and say, it is universally a bad thing that no business that's online wants to see. Now, a distributed denial of service is necessary because you're going to need to have a large number of machines sending traffic at the same time to the target victim. The picture you see at right comes from the Cloudflare docs, and I'll give you the link to that page at the end of this lesson. We don't need to get too deep in the weeds in how the DDoS attacks happen, but we're talking about a flood of HTTP messages. That's the web protocol that you, we all know and love. SYN, which is a lower networking protocol where you can do connections, and before the server, the target victim responds, you keep sending a more connection requests until it overwhelms the resources of the server and knocks it offline. Again, you get the amplification effect normally through what's called a botnet army, and this is where a bad actor or a bad organization will infect enough systems with malware. It's some kind of client that phones home, and ultimately the attacker is able to command and control this army of perhaps dozens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of infected what are called botnet zombie systems. And your system may be infected and participating in DDoS attacks, and you may never know it. So certainly as a consumer, you want to make sure that you have anti-malware software installed on your system and you're taking proper precautions that you don't get infected with a botnet client. Having said all that, what is DDoS protection? Well, it's two products, actually. It's one product with two stock keeping units, neither of which requires any configuration. It's something that Microsoft handles on their side of the cloud responsibility model. The basic tier is what all customers in Azure get for free. This is automatic protection of your Azure public IP addresses, both IPv4 and IPv6. The downside to BASIC is that you get, I believe, just zero telemetry from it. You won't even know necessarily if you've been protected by a DDoS attack. The paid tier is called Standard, and if you purchase a Standard tier DDoS protection plan, not only does Microsoft give you access to all of their own threat analytics, their machine learning predictive analytics, where you can get a heads up, hey, we're seeing some suspicious traffic patterns into your application gateway or your traffic manager or your virtual machines. It has a lot of extra add-ons to the feature, but you wind up paying a premium for that. There's no question about it. Let's go into the demo, and I have something a little bit different to share this time around in the demo. All right, I mentioned that I was going to do something a little different in this demo. There's really nothing to show with DDoS protection unless you have the standard tier. If you do a search in the Azure portal for DDoS, you come to DDoS protection plans, and this is the paid premium option, as I was saying before. Creating the plan seems pretty straightforward, just subscription resource group location, and it is. What I forgot to mention a moment ago is what's up here in this information bar. 
that you create a single DDoS protection plan and apply it to all resources and all your subscriptions. So the value proposition to buying the DDoS protection plan is instead of having Azure just silently give you some basic coverage on your public IP addresses that you use in Azure, with the standard tier, you get full Azure Monitor integration and telemetry and metrics and threat analytics. And it covers not only your public IP address resources, but all of your other associated Azure networking resources like virtual networks, application gateways, load balancer, traffic manager. So it is pretty compelling. I don't have a subscription, so I can't go further with this demo. And the reason I personally don't have a subscription if we come out to the Azure DDoS protection pricing page is because it's not cheap. As you can see, the monthly price for DDoS protection up to 100 resources is a little shy of 3,000 US dollars per month. That's a bit outside my personal price range. But the different thing I wanted to show you is just to give you a little extra Google foo when it comes to building your Azure knowledge and Azure skills. As you know, Azure is such an enormous ecosystem, it's easy to get overwhelmed. Know that you're always just a web search away. Google is my favorite search engine, so that's why I use it in my teaching. But when you want to know about an Azure feature, just do a search for Azure space, then the name of the feature, and then normally I'll throw in docs, but you don't have to. In this case, I just ran a Google search for Azure DDoS protection, and Microsoft has such high search engine relevancy, we get the pages that I want to show you right off the bat. You'll almost always see in the first search results what I call the marketing page. You'll see that the URL is azure.microsoft.com. Just full disclosure also, I use uBlock Origin in all of my browsers, so you might, if you're not using protection against ads, see some sponsored links above. I don't like those. So this is the first legitimate search result. And the marketing pages are all at azure.com or azure.microsoft.com. And I call it marketing because it's meant to sell you on the product, but it's a good way to get a high level overview of what that feature is. I'm just scrolling down the page here. A lot of sales marketing, but it's a good place to get started. And you can also see here on the navigation, there's a link to pricing and documentation. Otherwise, if you just continue in your search results, here we've got our first docs link and the Azure docs. I'm a huge fan of those and I hope you are as well. And then of course, scroll down a little bit more, we get our pricing. The only page I didn't see jump out at me that I would recommend when you're studying a new Azure feature, there's four really. There's the marketing page, there's the docs library, there's the pricing page, and then there's the SLA page. So let's look at that finally. I'll just tack on SLA. We're gonna cover service level agreements separately in a separate lesson at the tail end of this course. SLA or service level agreement is Microsoft's commitment to you at providing a certain level of service. Normally it's availability. And so here very simply, we can see that the service level agreement for Azure DDoS protection is that the guarantee the service will be available 99.99% of the time. That's what's called four nines of availability. Not too bad. If you want general information on denial of service and countermeasures, the Azure Docs have a good article for that. The URL is timw.info forward slash DDoS1. The actual documentation for the Azure DDoS protection service, you can find at timw.info forward slash DDoS2. And if you want more information on Cloudflare, by the way, full disclosure, I have no affiliate relationship with Cloudflare. I'm not even a Cloudflare customer, but I've always respected what they do and their docs are solid. timw.info forward slash DDoS3. Thank you very much, as always. I appreciate you. Next up in this trolley ride through security, there's a lot on Azure security in the AZ900 exam, for sure. We'll be dealing with two core principles of information security, authentication and authorization. You need to know the differences between those. In the meantime, like, subscribe. I always feel like a goof when I say that because I've heard so many YouTube creators say it, but I mean it. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. All of my Pluralsight content is in timw.info forward slash PS. And my website is techtrainertim.com. I'll see you in the next episode. Take good care. Happy studying.